Hey everybody, welcome to Figure Feedback. My name is Jeremy and today I wanna to tell you all about this amazing process that resulted in me getting these figures right here on my table in front of you. All of these figures I printed myself in my garage using a brand new 3D resin printer that I got from Micro Center. It's called the Anycubic Photon Mono. It has a 4K screen, it's a resin printer and it only cost $150 on sale from Micro Center. And I've been wanting to get into 3D printing for a while, but was always kind of put off about how complicated it was and, and just all the different things and accessories that you need to go along with it. But up until this point, I didn't know anything about resin 3D printing. I was just familiar with the filament stuff, you know, like the plasticky looking spools and it just keeps on printing and it goes up and up and up like that. That's what I thought 3D printing was. But with this resin 3D printing, it allows much more detail of figures and it doesn't take up a lot of space. It's potentially a lot more dangerous, but with the proper precautions, the results can be really, really good, as you can see right here. And I just think it's amazing that in this day and age, anybody, a regular Joe or Jane with no real technical knowledge, you don't have to be an artist or anything like that, be able to get a really affordable machine, take it home, and in no time, with like a $16 bottle of resin, be able to print out an army of awesome figures, which if you were to see these in the store, they would sell for at least $5 and oftentimes more. And I got a whole cast of characters here, you know, from like this dwarven blacksmith type of guy from Loot Studios to this wizard headmaster guy also from Loot Studios, a big old troll, Warhammer 40k battle sister, the Mandalorian, uh, a berserker, a golem with a couple of swords, a death merchant out there in front. There's just so many different things to print and it's not just figures. You can make stuff for your home. You can make different parts and all that stuff is just wonderful, but we're just gonna stick with the figures from now. So here's a little bit of a close up on these guys. And then we can talk about the whole process of how in the world all these things get put together in the first place. So this is basically where everything starts. There are a lot of different sites out there where people will upload their own custom 3D models that anybody can just print for themselves. And this is one of them. This is called My Mini Factory. And they have so many different types of things that you can print here. Just a lot of different figures, but just to try to make things as expedient as possible, I ended up on this one. This is a Demon Viking Infantry. And this is what this guy is gonna look like once he's printed. Uh, the person who put this up, they can leave some details details there if they wanted to. Um, people can also leave comments and share their painted versions or their printed versions of this guy. And then you can just look at the parts and see everything that's that it's going to come with. And maybe there's some figures that you have to actually assemble, you know, just basically like putting arms in sockets, putting legs in sockets, you know, and parts can be interchangeable. It's just all up to the individual creator. But anyway, once you download this file, you'll be able to open it up in what's called slicing software, which is basically just something that can read these 3D files, and then they'll be able to reinterpret it for your particular printer so that you don't have to worry about doing that. So this is the software that I'm using. It's made by the same company that made the printer that I'm using. This is the Anycubic Proton workshop. And when I first saw this thing, I was like, dude, what is this? I will never be able to figure this stuff out, but it's really not even that bad. So I'm just going to open up the file that I downloaded of the demon Viking here. This is the model file. The sliced file is something that you get after you've already set up all your settings and everything. So here's a look at how this guy is going to turn out. And this right here is my printing area. So basically if I can fit it anywhere on here, I'll be able to print it. If I wanted to print multiple things, I can do that too. I can come over here and I can make it go as big as I possibly can, or I can just scale it down to the way that it originally was, or I can even make it bigger just by holding that and everything just kind of grows proportionately. And yeah, you can get nice and close with this guy. 
and you can rotate it the way that you want. If you wanted it to, um, if you wanted to turn them around on its side or something like that, you can just print it however way that you feel most comfortable uh, printing it. And it's just so amazing how this works. And then you can just move this slider down and it's basically telling you how it's going to print. It's going to start from nothing and it's going to build up these supports like that. And the supports are going to be built into the figure itself. And then when it's all done, you can remove those supports. So how freaking cool is that? And it's not complicated at all. There's a lot of other like little functions that you can click on and change different parameters and stuff that's more advanced, but you don't even really need to know that stuff at the moment. And that is how everything works. You just put the sliced file on a USB drive, stick it into the printer, select it. It has a touch screen and then you just wait. The future is here. So this is pretty much how the process works. First, I need to put some resin into the reservoir. And if you think about this like a traditional printer, resin will be like the ink cartridge. Only difference is it is very poisonous. You should always wear at least a pair of gloves whenever you're handling resin, but ideally a pair of goggles and even a respirator is nothing to mess around with. And then I go over to the front of the machine. I hit print. I look at all of the prints that's currently on my USB drive and I pick the one that I want and then I just press a play button. And then from there, that plate lowers down into the resin and it begins the printing process literally layer by layer. And it also gives you a little countdown timer on how long it's gonna take for this print to be done. And as time goes on, you'll be able to see how the process is going little by little. At first, it's just gonna be a big pool of resin, but as that plate rises up, you begin to see the actual structure of what you're building. It builds upside down, and it's really fascinating and awesome to be able to come back, check on it, and see the process that's been made. And then after the print is done, there's the post-processing stage, which is kind of like how people used to develop film in a dark room. There's chemicals involved and processes that has to be done and organization that you're better off having than not. And it would just make your life a lot easier. So these figures are stuck to this plate. So I need to take a scraper and I need to scrape these resin figures onto the surface so that I can then wash them in isopropyl alcohol. And you have to be careful, you know, because scraping these things on that plate, you gotta be careful that that resin doesn't splatter and get on your skin or get in your face. And that's why it's always important to wear protective gear, especially goggles. Now, once I have it down inside of this alcohol, I'm just gonna agitate it a little bit and let it just sit there for a little while. And then I'll be able to take it out of the alcohol. And then after I'm done dunking it in the alcohol, I need to get those supports off. And I learned that an easier way to get the supports off is to dip the figures in warm water. Kind of like if your figure is stiff and you wanna open up their hands so that they can hold a weapon, you put some hot water on it and that's going to soften up those supports and make it a lot easier to tear them away from the figure. I learned that the hard way when I cured my Mandalorian figure before I removed the supports and when I tried to remove the supports, it left some scarring on the back of the figure. You can't really see it now because I primed them, but it does damage the coating if you wait that long to take the supports off. So this is another delicate process and I'm trying to be neat. I don't want to splash. I don't want to, you know, get resin residue anywhere that can uh, touch my skin or anything like that. So I'm just breaking these apart. And when you use that water, it makes it so much easier to finish this process. And then once you're done with that, you have to wait for the figures to air dry. And I think when I did this, I did not wait for the figures to dry. I just immediately tried to cure them. And um, here I'm using this grow light that I sometimes use for plants that grow outside of my arrow garden that aren't under the LEDs anymore. And the curing process, it kind of just depends how long it's going to take. It can be a few minutes. It just depends on the strength and intensity of the light that you have. And once it's cured, then you can finally handle the figures with your hands. But until that happens, 
don't touch them with your bare hands. Doesn't even matter if you already wash them in alcohol. You need to wait for that resin to be cured because the UV light cures all of the resin and makes it safe for handling and disposal. So I have been printing up a storm with this machine. Almost every single spare hour of the day, that machine is either running with something that I'm trying to print or I'm down there watching it or I'm taking something out and I'm cleaning it or I'm curing. It's just so much fun. And I think that it's amazing how we can go into stores and we can see figures, in particular statues, and knowing that if you really wanted to, you could come home and spend $180, $200 on a machine that can print out some really nice, high quality figures for you. Let me give you an example. So since I recorded that first part, here's something else that I printed right here. This is a Captain America bust by Eastman, and it didn't need any supports. It comes with this stand already attached to it, and that's a shield. And this guy looks amazing. The amount of detail that this 3D print has, and this is just straight out of the out of being cured. I didn't spray paint it or anything, you know, and honestly, I'm kind of afraid to take a paintbrush to it because I don't want to ruin it. Such fine detail. And some other figures that I got from here, check this one out. This is also from Loot Studios for The Adventurer. And this figure is like a geek's dream. I mean, just look at all this detail. There's a guitar over there on that side. There's a flux capacitor on the back. He's got video game controllers, a hoverboard over there. There's a drone on top that I accidentally broke one of the wings off of, but look at all this detail. This took about maybe four hours and 45 minutes to five hours to print. There's so much detail in this guy. And then I'll just show you one more that I recently printed out here. And this is an orc, a female orc. And she has this really awesome hammer here and the base is separate from the figure. So those two had to be printed separately, but you see they go in together. And if you can just imagine, if you took yourself a paintbrush or an airbrush or whatever and just really start to paint these things, these statues will look very, very close, if not better than some of the ones that you buy on the shelves. And like I said, I've just been having such a great time. Here's a Mandalorian uh, Mando figure that I painted. I'll put up a picture or two so you can see some of the other figures that I painted. But since then, I mean, there's a whole bunch of different little figures on my desk. There's a T-800 Terminator. I accidentally broke the arm off or the hand off of him when trying to remove him from the supports. I mean, all kinds of just really, really awesome stuff. It's just been so much fun. I mean, and here's a guy that I that I printed, I think, yesterday. It's this really cool looking like berserker type guy. He's got this amazing axe, a ton of detail on this shield with these dragons just coming from the machine from the bottom up. And when it's done, it's just really, really awesome. So that is it, you guys. That's been my experience with 3D printing figures right in my garage and experience has been really awesome so far. The hardest part is waiting in crazy anticipation for those prints to come out, but there's still so much to learn, you know, making supports inside of the slicing software and maybe even learning how to design different things for myself to actually say, I designed and printed this. It's just great. So it was not out of the realm of possibility for regular ordinary people. So if you got yourself a couple hundred bucks or so to spare, this is definitely something that I think that you should try. Uh, you'll find so many different things that you can print. There's no shortage of them and I'm sure you will have a great time. So thank you all so much for watching this episode of Figure Feedback. I appreciate you. If you like stuff like this, be sure to leave a like, leave a comment, and or subscribe. And until next time, I'm Jeremy, and I'll talk to you later.